Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. For many of us, a visit to the nursery or garden center means stocking up on a favorite flower or preferred perennial. Your garden purchases can also have an impact on the fauna who visit the flora in your backyard. Planting for pollinators is an easy way for all of us to act locally and think globally. At Riverberry Farm in Fairfax, Jane Sorensen has been promoting pollinator-friendly plants for many years. We talked with her a few years ago when an effort to get young people to go wild for pollinators was getting some buzz. Rebecca Gollin has our story. There's a buzz in the air about pollinators. Honeybees are definitely a very significant pollinator. They were introduced with the colonists um, in the 16, late 1600s, and they still are very significant pollinators for the whole United States. Jean Sorensen knows about pollinators. A former landscape architect, Sorensen now farms and teaches University of Vermont students how to incorporate plants and features that attract pollinators into their designs. She remembers when insects and bugs were thought of as a nuisance rather than beneficial. Anecdotally, anyone who's maybe over 50 <laughs> can remember that when uh, you would stop at a gas station and the gas stations at that point were all um, full service. And the first thing the person would do after they put the gas nozzle in your tank is they wash your window. And we rarely wash our windows. Our, and you had to wash your window because it was coated with dead insects. Not, we don't have nearly as many insects um, as we used to. Sorensen always used native plants in her landscape designs. And when it became clear that pollinators were in trouble, she decided it was time to do more. I started thinking, well, you know, I wonder how I can fit into this. I'm no longer practicing landscape architecture, but as a farmer and a person who sells plants, how can I get involved and be of any help? And I thought, well, I can add more plants and I can get myself a little bit more educated maybe and give talks and teach at UVM. Vermont is home to a variety of pollinators, from birds and bees to butterflies and wasps. Bees are the most important contributor, and their decline has been the most drastic. There's not one single reason behind the drop in numbers, but factors include pesticide use, disease, and an increasingly fragmented landscape. So we've got a pesticide pressure, but the other huge pressure is habitat. And so as we continue to develop the, the land, um, we're reducing our pollinator habitat. A new program in the state is growing to meet the challenge. It's estimated that about one third of everything we eat and about three quarters of all plant crops rely on pollinators. Jess Hyman is the executive director of the Vermont Community Garden Network. She's working with the Intervale Center in Burlington and the national organization kidsgardening.org to get the project going. It's called Wild for Pollinators, and the ideal participant is everyone. Our hope with Wild for Pollinators is to dramatically increase the amount of pollinator habitat around the state. And this can happen in big swaths of land and also in little, little patches. So if everyone who owns, every, every homeowner, every community garden, every school garden, every business, every farm, if everyone who has the ability to preserves a little bit of space for pollinators, it's going to make a huge difference. Participants receive information, seeds, and signs for their gardens. In return, they sign a pledge to either leave some land unmowed or establish a pollinator-friendly plot. There are resources for teachers and individuals, and the group maintains a display garden in Burlington. Hyman enlisted UVM Food Systems intern Lily Myers to help get the program started. My big thing is really just trying to get people to be aware of this issue because it really is, I think, one of the largest issues of our time is this need for pollinator conservation. Myers spent months developing the website and working out the logistics of the program. While Vermont is the target audience, participants from out of state are welcome. 
The hope is that seeing signs in a neighbor's yard will raise awareness throughout the community and get people talking about what else they can do. I'll send out little blurbs to the different participants and kind of give them ideas of what else they can do to get involved with pollinator conservation or how can they build community and how can they educate their neighbors about this. So my ideal person would be someone who wants to put their site up in their front yard and then any time anyone asks about it, they can give them some information and tell them, oh yeah, well this is the program, it's wild for pollinators and it's really important because of the declining pollinator populations and then kind of building conversation and community around that. Those conversations might just be the key to keeping Vermont's landscape working for pollinators. So we're in a good place to be able to say, hey, before it's too late, let's pay attention. What can we do in our development patterns? And when we do develop, what can we do with our development to make sure that we're creating habitat, not just for pollinators, but for all the organisms. It's a new initiative that's already attracting a buzz. And its organizers hope that it continues to grow in Vermont. In Burlington, I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. Thank you, Rebecca. From the buzz in the garden, we turn to the sweet science of the ring. Boxing has long been thought of as a manly or macho pursuit. Although bare knuckle bruisers defending their honor in or out of the ring is rare, there's still plenty to prove when someone straps on a pair of boxing gloves. And as Keith Silva learned, boxing is as much for the body as it is for the mind and the soul. <laughs> Lucian Benway is a boxer and a bit of a philosopher. The cool part about boxing is that you, once you learn that presence of mind, that translates to every other part of your life. Benway grew up playing sports. As he got older, he'd meet his dad at the gym to exercise. One day, as his dad was finishing a workout, Benway explored the gym and ran smack dab into his destiny. I think I was 20 years old. There was a room and there was a ring and there was some heavy bags, a couple of speed bags, a double end bag. And I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll try hitting the heavy bag, just kind of mess around. Luckily for me, there was a coach in there and he asked me if I wanted to do some work. And so I put the gloves on, we did some work on the mitts. I didn't realize that there was something that I could know nothing about that had to do with my body like that. And so I instantly fell in love and I haven't stopped boxing since. Within a few years, Benway was boxing competitively. He was named the Golden Gloves Northern New England champion in 2008. He finished his amateur career with a record of 12 and three. Benway is no longer a competitive boxer, but he's still in the gym. At Ethos Athletics in South Burlington, he's the general manager, a group fitness teacher, and a personal oh, yeah. trainer. So they work with each other. His ability to teach even the most rank amateurs, like this newbie boxing in business casual and socks, that was better, yeah. Speaks to what Benway's learned from what's been called the sweet science. Yes, there it is. There we go. There we go. I think the average person sees two people just coming together and trying to take each other's heads off. What they don't see is the chess match that happens behind that, right? There's a lot of things that happen. In boxing, we've been teaching people to be present for ages because you don't really have another choice, right? Because if you're not present, well then, well, it's not a good situation for you, right? So it's a very deeper science when it comes to like what actually happens in the ring, but then you have everything that happens outside of the ring. And I think that that's, for me, that's what got me is that there's so much more that happens when you're just training for both physical and mental benefits. All that said, even the most present puncher is going to get hit hard. When I train fighters, we work a lot in the defense before we actually get into sparring to make sure that we're as safe as possible. It depends on where you're getting hit, how you're getting hit, whether it's a clean shot, am I rolling with the shot, or am I just didn't see it at all. If you hit me in the gut and give me a gut check and I, it looks like I'm gonna puke, well, it gives you more, more of a reason to come in and try to finish me versus like if you gut check me and I'm really good at hiding it, maybe you won't come in and take my head off and that's a good thing for me. When he's not training boxers, Benway works with cancer survivors through Steps to Wellness, a group exercise program based at the UVM Cancer Center. 
Has this program improved your physical abilities? Such he as also works with Vermont seniors in the Enhanced Fitness Program, an effort sponsored by the UVM Medical Center. Young or old, Benway brings his boxer's brain, what he calls presence in the ring, to every aspect of his work. Most people don't injure themselves training. They don't injure themselves on the heavy bag. They injure themselves when they go home and they bend over to tie their boot or their shoe and they bent incorrectly and they, so they slipped a disc because they're not present in the moment. Every time you box, like whether it's with another person or you're on the heavy bag or you're shadow boxing or you're training on whatever specific piece it is, you'll learn something more about yourself. The way we bring boxing to people is Hey, this is going to make you stronger, this is going to make you faster, this is going to put you in a better aerobic state, and we're going to increase your cardiovascular conditioning and make your heart a little bit stronger. Faster, stronger, and smarter, too. In my opinion, there is no better in, like, way to train your whole entire body other than boxing, and which is why we, that's why we do it here, right? And we do it without hitting people, but because it hits so, it checks off so many of the boxes. It's your legs, your hips, your torso, your shoulders, your back. Like everything works, but then you also have to have mental clarity and there's a lot to work on technique and focus. And so you get, you get the best of both worlds. Boxing is for everybody. And that's, that's why I love it so much. Yeah. The benefit to a sport, as bruising as boxing, is that it gives you a fighting chance against, perhaps, your toughest opponent, you. In South Burlington, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. And that's our program for today. Thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.